Let's really praise Him today. Hallelujah. Worthy, worthy, worthy. We praise you, Jesus. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Do you love him today? I know you do. I want you to take your communion set. It's the, we're going to worship the Lord together because he's worthy. Do you believe that? He's worthy of all the praise and all the blessing. Hallelujah. Somebody's getting a blessing, and that's all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God. Turn to somebody and say, you never know what's going to happen at Free Chapel. You never know. Just never know. I like it that way. Praise God. Welcome to all of our campuses. We're so thankful that you're worshiping the Lord with us today. What a joy, what an honor to have each and every one of you. And we're believing today that as we have communion together, that the Holy Spirit will touch you. I want you to take that piece of bread out. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, this bread represents my body how he went to the cross and he took the curse. The nails pierced his hands, the spear in his side, the stripes on his back for you and for me. And today we just claim all of those benefits of the covenant that Jesus made with his broken body on the cross. How many of you believe he took the curse? He took your sin and my sin he forever nailed it to the cross, and we are forgiven today. We are cleansed today. And he said, take this and eat it, and when you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Those of you online, those of you at every campus, take, eat, this do in remembrance of him. He took the cup and he said, this cup represents my blood, which is shed for the remission of sin. Take and drink this do in remembrance of me. What you're doing is applying the blood of Jesus to every place in your life that needs his help. Take, receive in his name. Hallelujah. That's a cup of blessing right there. Thank you, Jonathan. That's a cup of blessing. He is Lord, key of G. Sing with me. He is Lord. Everybody sing. He is Lord. Sing it quiet. 
sing it at every campus, sing it online. He is Lord. somebody there's hope there's faith there's love in this house today you're gonna make it you're gonna make it hallelujah to the Lamb of God praise his wonderful name to God be the glory I love him today don't you smile at someone as you're seated and open your Bibles with me to 1st Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 is where I want to go this morning. Tonight at five o'clock, this is the first Sunday of the month, and we will have our prayer and praise service. 
And I want to personally invite you to join us at all of our campuses. We will be gathering to pray and worship for one hour. I'll be leading that here, and the pastors will be leading it, and it's going to be a powerful time. If you've never been to one of these prayer meetings, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are showing up, and this church is on its knees, and we're saying, Lord, we seek your face. And I tell you, there's nothing like it. You know, you can go talk to people about your problems, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can go talk to friends. You can go talk to somebody and a pastor. But there comes a point when you really need to just take it to Jesus and leave it there. And that's what prayer is all about. And if you've not experienced what will happen here at 5 o'clock this afternoon, I want to encourage you to come get in an old-fashioned prayer meeting and praise and worship that will set your soul free. Let's seek him together. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 13. Powerful instructions. Be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. This next part is really something. Act like men. Be strong. And then he ends it with one more commandment. He says, next verse, and let all that you do be done in love. I love the straightforth challenge of these scriptures. They're laid out beautifully and powerfully like a beautiful outline. Be watchful. Stay on alert. Keep your eyes open. Stand firm in the faith. Don't lose your conviction. Stand firm. Things are going to come that will try to shake you off of your rock. But stand firm in your faith. And then a commandment to the men. Act like men. Isn't that a great commandment in the New Testament? That men need to hear in a confused generation. Act like men. And let all that you do. I love the tenderness of this part. Because he says that right after acting like a man. It and being some macho. To rest. You know just running around. Ordering screaming. I'm head in my house. No let all that you do. Be done in love. What God needs more than ever before is men to act like men. He wants you every day to step up every day and do what men are supposed to do. There's a narrow view of masculinity in many people's minds. and They think that the Bible gives a narrow view, but the Bible is very, very diverse in its view of masculinity. For example, Jacob, who was one of the greatest heroes of faith in the Bible, he was the father of 12 sons, 10 sons, and two, two that were taken in. J Joseph's boys, I don't have time to explain it. <laughs> he gave birth to the 12 tribes of Israel that became the tribe, the nation of Israel. It all came from a guy named Jacob. But the definition of his of his masculinity is, is pretty amazing in scripture. He was not a hunter. He was not a sportsman. He was not uh, a major warrior. He was not killing and filing, and swinging swords and throwing rocks. The Bible said he was a mama's boy. He stayed home. He liked cooking. He liked fashion, probably GQ magazine. <laughs> and he was a man and he was a man of God. And his twin brother Esau, the Bible draws a clear difference. He was a hunter. He was on probably the front cover of Outdoor Magazine. He, he, he brought home stuff he killed every day out in the woods. Probably the quarterback of the high school football team. They both were men. They both were men that God used in powerful ways. And even though men are different, not everybody's athletic, not every, that doesn't mean you're a man, not everybody's, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
flamboyant or strong or not. God has a big, big view of what a man is. And he says, be what I created you and act like a man. In first, in first Kings chapter two and verse two, when David was dying on his deathbed, he calls in his son Solomon and he says, I'm about to go the way of all the earth. In other words, I'm dying. And he said, I'm giving you this last commandment, be strong and act like a man. Be strong and act like a man. Be strong. What, what, what does that mean? That means be, you can be and not act. You can be a man and not act like a man. You can be a husband and not act like a husband. You can be a father and not act like a father. You can be a king's son and not act like a king's son. It's not just enough to be it. You've got to act it out. Act out what you are. And he said, act like men. How powerful is that commandment? What does it mean? Now, there are three definitions that I'm going to give you of what it means to act like a man. Number one, to act like a man means don't act like a woman. <laughs> men are called... To lead, not follow. Men were given by God, according to the word of God, an anointing and a responsibility and an accountability to lead their family, not follow. Act like a man. The only reason the snake got in the garden, we put old Eve down, she messed everything up, she listened to the serpent. Where was Adam? Adam should have been watchful. Adam should have stood firm in his faith. Adam should have made sure no snake was getting in his garden. It's my garden. Act like men means take responsibility. Lead. Take responsibility. It's on you. It's your house. It's your kids. It's your marriage. It's your family. That's your job, and men lead. If my family's here and they're supposed to be over there, I can't just sit back and hope things work out. Step in and act like a man and say we are not where we ought to be and acting like we ought to be acting. So here, I'm taking control, and I'm going to lead this family little by little. And notice the last part of that verse, stand firm. Yeah, I know what's right. I'm going to stand firm, and I'm watching. But then act like a man. I'm going to act like a man. And all that you do, do in love. What powerful instructions. It's on you more than anybody else to act like a man. Are you leading your family? Are you realizing that the family is in desperate need of men of God to lead their family spiritually, lead their family emotionally, lead their family physically, lead your family to church, lead your family in prayer, lead your family in the word of God. I can't do it. Yes, you can. God made you that when he wired you, he wired you to be a leader. When I say to follow and to obey this text and act like a man means don't act like a woman. It's important that this generation hears that teaching because we're living in a time when major corporations like Disney are now trying to do away with gender and say there's no difference between male and female. They announced this week, Disney, that they were trying their best to get 50% of all of their cartoons and new movies to do away with the titles of boys and girls because they have an agenda. On March the 31st, the Biden administration recognized Transgender Day of, visit, of, of Visibility. 
They have put in a transgender official sworn in as a four-star admiral in the U.S. Public Health Service Corp Commission. On passports, they now have demanded that it not that they now allow an X instead of checking male or female on passports, you can check X, which says I'm neither. The Biden administration announced this week that they endorse sex change surgery and hormone therapy for children, not for adults, for children, for children. What is happening to parental rights? What is happening to us deciding what our children hear about sexuality? We must, we must realize that, that there's a war going on. Disney announced this week that 50% of the characters in their movies and cartoons will, I want to read it just like they said, they will be representing the LGBTQ community account for at least 50% of its regular characters by the end of the story. In other words, indoctrinating little innocent minds of little children, and I'm not mad at anybody, I'm not angry at anybody, I'm simply going to tell you what God's Word says. I'm simply telling you that what the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, did this past week was not an evil act of bigotry. When he said, and I quote, we will make sure that the parents can send their kids to school to get an education, not indoctrination. Thank God for a man standing up and saying this is right and this is wrong. Our kindergarten to third graders don't need to be taught that there are multiple genders. There's male and there's female. That's the Word of God. That's the truth of the Scriptures. You can be seated. Don't leave. Don't get mad. Just listen. Listen to what Romans chapter 1 says. It's like reading the New York Times. Verse 26, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one for another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which was due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, we don't want to hear that stuff, get rid of that stuff, ban that stuff, stop that stuff. Even though they did not want to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate, debased minds to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness, their whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undeserved untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, and knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death not only do the same, but they are proud or approve of those practices. I can't say it any better than God's holy word. Act like men. I was born this way. I was born in sin. I was born to commit adultery. I, if I go the natural way I was born, I'd be a drunk. I'd be a, I'd be a cocaine addict. I'd be an adulterer. I'd be a fornicator. But when you get, that's why you need to be born again. If you were born that way, get born again. Get the nature of Christ and be an overcomer. And just like I have to resist temptation and sin, you learn how to resist temptation and sin. Get your mind renewed. Be not conformed to this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your 
your mind, and suddenly you'll get the strength to live a life that's pleasing to God. It's the same salvation for the straight as for the gay. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And it's time for men to act like men and women to act like women. Act like men means you don't act like a woman. A man has no business being in competition in college sports with a woman. That's not right. That's crazy. That's insanity. What are we doing? What are we accepting? And why are we so worried and quiet? Let's speak the truth in love. All that you do, doing. The, if I love you, I'm going to tell you the truth. If I see a truck coming at you about to run over you, I'm going to scream at you to get out of the way. I'm preaching the truth to you. There's a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. This word is right. This word will heal your life. I'm not mad at anybody. What do you mean, act like a man? It means don't be the weaker vessel. In 1 Peter chapter 3, he said, Men, deal with your wives in understanding, giving honor to her as the weaker vessel. And being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Notice what he said. Give honor to her as the weaker vessel. When God made you, he made you physically stronger, emotionally stronger, spiritually stronger. That Bible right there says that the woman is the weaker vessel. And that's why this record that was held in college swimming could not be broke. Women had worked and worked and worked. And then they let a man say he was a woman and get in the pool and break the record. And he gets the, he gets the gold. The Bible is right. The woman is the weaker vessel. Not, not she's less. I believe in equality. I believe in equ equality in pay and, and in opportunity. All of that. But let's just go back to what the Bible says. And the Bible says that if the man ought to be the person who's leading that family. As the weaker vessel. Well, you don't know my wife. Well, you don't know my wife. And I'm telling you. If you don't know her, you, you wouldn't think she's the weaker vessel, but physically, spiritually, emotionally, I'm supposed to be the strong one. She can fall to pieces, but, and I can have a day like that, but then I got to get up and I got to get my act together and I got to leave. I got to act like a man. I can't have a pity party the rest of my life. I got to act like a man. You initiate prayer. You make sure the kids are in church. You make sure they're signed up. You make sure that they're doing their work. You make sure you, you act like a man. Where are the men? We've had prodigal kids. We've had children who've gotten off and done crazy things. I've had times where I didn't even know how to pray. I've had dark times in my family, just like you're going through dark times in your family. But one thing that I would never let go of, I would never let go of the biblical promise of household salvation. I like what Joshua said, and he said, I'm deciding for my whole family, I'm going to act like a man. As for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. And I'm going to say that in love, but I'll never stop moving in that direction with my family. And one of these days when I stand on streets of gold, I'm going to have them all up there. And that's what success is. Not a bigger house, not a bigger car, not a bigger this and that. If I can get me and my family to heaven and lead them that way, I'm acting like a man. Step up and act like a man. Get on your knees for the salvation of your son or your daughter. Act like a man and carry the weight and bear the burden of your family. Don't, don't follow lead. Don't be the weaker vessel. Don't be a drama queen if you're a man. Act like a man. When conflict comes, 
You're not a man because somebody says something about your wife and you walk up and slap them. That does not make you a man. Act like a man. Don't be a drama queen. Who, who, you, 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 who you looking at? No, nobody. You ever seen guys like that? They think they're a man because they, yeah, you saw it. You saw it last Sunday. Pam, right in the face. That's not, that's not what a man is. People, your family always worried you're going to go off, you, you're going to go crazy, you're going to go nuts and, and, and tell somebody off, cuss somebody out. Tone it down. Don't be a drama queen. Act like a man. Man handles his, situ his situation and his stuff like a man. There may come a time when you have to fight somebody or something, but make sure, you, make sure you're not acting like a fool and act like a man. Wow. <laughs> Secondly, to act like a woman is not to act like a man. Act like a man. It also means don't act like an animal. 275 times the Word of God uses the word beast. In scriptures like T Titus chapter 1 and verse 2, it says that men who are liars have become like evil beast. Psalm 73 said, I was like a beast before you. I'm like an animal. I'm out of control. An animal's only out for his own desires and his own selfishness. And men, the Bible said, in the last days would become like beasts, burning and lust and uncleanness and defilement and acting like animals, absolute animals. The Bible said that Nebuchadnezzar was so given over to demonic spirits that he acted like an animal. Animals can only care for their own desires. He's an animal. So selfish, so full of themselves. Me, 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 my, my, my. Animals can never break free from the old nature and the appetites to please themselves. But God said, I want you to be watchful and stand firm in your faith and act like men, not animals. Have morals of men, not animals. If you're like an animal, it's my food. It's my chair. It's my sex. It's my needs. It's my appetites. You're an animal. You know, animals have no manners. You can have company over and a dog will jump up on the couch and just start licking himself in front of everybody. No, no manners. Butt starts itching and they'll, they'll, they'll drag their butt across the carpet all the way across just to scratch it. It's crazy. No shame, no decency, no class. Sniffing everything. No manners. How many men act like animals? Your bedroom is not your locker room, sitting up in the bed, picking at your toenails and all kinds of sounds coming out of you in stereo. And then you want to cozy up to your wife and she's like, I'm just not feeling it tonight. Well, well don't be surprised. You're acting like an animal. Act like a man. Don't act like an animal. What's wrong with you, honey? <laughs> you, you, you don't even talk. You growl. <laughs> Open the door for her. Help her be seated. Thank her for the meal that she made. Honor her and love her. and Don't act like an animal to her. Act like a man. Love her. Put her first. Honor her in servitude. If you listen to what I'm preaching, you'll have a better April than you did March. I mean, we ought to introduce our, our women to seven days of servanthood like they've never experienced. And you take the kids and you send her to the spa and you take care of her. You think of her first. You put her first and watch how God will begin to bless your life. And those of you who are single and you ain't never finding no dates or nothing, it's time to act like a man. Get off the stupid internet. 
and ask somebody out. Go find a girl and marry her. And ask for a date. So low class for guys nowadays. They just sit back and sit back and sit back. Get up off your blessed assurance. And, well, I don't know if that's the one or is that the one or is that the one. All of them are better than you. Just marry one of them and get on with it. I mean, it's, it's about whatever. Love is a choice. We need some men. We need to act like men. We, not, not the dog. You see these dogs, they just go jumping on, on female dogs in heat every day. And we're not animals, men. We're not animals. We've been called to live holy and to live right and to be faithful to our homes and our marriages and our families. We're not animals. We're not beasts. Act like a man. I don't care what the Hollywood is saying. I don't care what the world is saying. I don't care what your buddies at work are doing. Act like a man. Man's faithful. Man's. He's in control. To act like a man is not to act like a woman. To act like a man is to lead, to not follow. To act like a man is to not be the weaker vessel. To act like a man is to not act like an animal. Rude and crude and immoral. Lastly, to act like a man means don't act like a boy. Boys run to their mommy. Boys, you're not a boy anymore. You're a man. Boys have to be taken care of. Their clothes have to be folded and ironed. Everything put up for them. But, but Paul puts it like this in 1 Corinthians 13. He said, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child and I reasoned like a child. Me, 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 my, 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 I, 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 me, 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 my, 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 I, I, I. You are not a child. You'll only be young once, but you can be immature forever. <laughs> Grow up. Your wife is not your mama. Grow up. And he said, but when I became a man, everybody shout, when I became a man, I put away, no, I didn't want the women to say, but when I became a man, give me a deep, low bass, when I became a man, that sounds better, thank you. <laughs> when I became a man, I put away childish things. Isn't that powerful? A lot of men are just, they're, they're still like little children. And it's time to act like men. So he gives us the little outline that I close with. What does it mean then? I've told you what you don't do. But here's what you do if you're going to act like a man. He said, number one, be watchful. Be alert. Be on your guard. It's a military term. Your family needs you on the wall. Your family needs you at the door, watchful. You're paying attention to what's going on with your family more than yourself. Be watchful. What are they looking at? What are they listening to? Who are their friends? Who are they running with? How's their spirit? How's their attitude? What's going on with them? They just go in and go back there and shut the door. What's that funny smell on them? That's what acting like a man is. You get involved. You engage again. You're watchful. The men and the people in the families never rested until they knew watchmen were on the walls looking, keeping watch. And somebody's got to start looking and watching over the marriage. And it's your marriage. And watch over that marriage. And watch over your children, over your sons, over your daughters. Watch over them. Be watchful. Be alert. 
Be prayerful. Be, be on fire for God. And watch yourself. Watch your, watch your character. Watch your integrity. Watch your intentions. I've seen too many of my friends in ministry. They just didn't watch. And then he said, not only be watchful, don't be passive, be watchful. Are you watching? Then he said, stand firm in your faith. Hold tight to your convictions. What we believe about the Word of God, hold tight, stand firm on it. We're not to be uncertain. The Bible talks about Cornelius and said there was a certain man. That, that, and I read that one time and, and, and it really spoke to me because the Lord said, usually when I'm going to use somebody, I need them to be certain. I don't need uncertainty. Well, I don't know if that, I don't know if I need that. I don't know. I don't know if I need to take a stand. I don't know if I need to really believe that. I don't know. No. We're not uncertain men. We're certain men. Stand firm on the Word of God. Stand firm on sin, repentance, and judgment to come. Stand firm on tithing. Stand firm on church attendance. Stand firm on prayer and leading your family. Stand firm. Act like men. Paul could say at the end of his life, I have kept the faith. Don't let your theology gravitate to your behavior. In other words, you start changing your behavior and then your, your, your theology has to come over here and get behind your new stuff because you've lost your convictions. But let the Word of God bring you continually back in line with your theology again and again out of a life of compromise in alignment with the scriptures. That's why I come into churches like this. You can be so off in your spirit and off in your thinking and then you walk in and a preacher can get up and just say one verse and it can whoop, just instead of, instead of your behavior causing your faith to gravitate and compromise your Faith begins to pull you in line with God's Word and gravitate towards your theology. And then he says something so powerful. He says, I don't want you to be cavalier and loose and lax about temptation. Stand firm in your faith. I just got a little Twitter problem. I just got a little internet problem. I just got a little, no, 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 no. Stand firm. I got a little, a little, a little drug problem. I got a little, stand firm. I got to get this under control. And then he ends with the last powerful thought. Act like men. And let all you do be done in love. Every reaction I'm to respond maybe strongly, but in love. Every stand that I take for my family that's biblically based, I can do it, but I'm to do it in love. Every conversation that I have with my family or people, I can stand for what I believe and I can be watchful and I can act like a man, but I have to do it in love. The Message Bible says love without stopping. Love without stopping. Love without stopping. So if a child gets off, you stand firm on what you know. and You stay watchful and you do all you can do to lead them right. Act like a man. But love without stopping. Love without stopping. Love that person who's in a lifestyle of sin. Love, love. Do the best you can. It won't be easy and it won't be normal and it won't be natural, but just keep loving. Just keep loving because Corinthians said love never fails. I close with this. I'm reading this little story this week and I'm gonna pre I have a right to bring this one back and re-preach it and when I finish it, but I'm going to give you just the story that messed me up this week. 
true story of a man who was climbing a mountain with four of his friends. He's a mount, professional mountain climber, and four people were with him. They were all four tied onto a rope. 35 feet distance, that's how they do it. And they had all the equipment, very dangerous. They went, ascended fine, got to the top, had a celebration, and on the descent, the professional person that was leading the climb slipped and fell. And when he fell because of their inexperience, those he was connected to on that rope, one by one began to fall and slide down that mountain. True story. Three of them were killed, including the professional. But it didn't stop there. This is what got my attention as a preacher. Because as they were coming down that mountain, sliding, 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 all tied together, one man fell, but all those connected to him failed. And there were two others who were descending in front of them, and they wiped them out, killed one of them. But what got me was he said there were three that were ascending while they were descending and they hit those three new climbers and killed two of them and the thought hit me so strong that it's not the climb that's the hardest part but the ones that are in most danger maybe aren't even the young people in this generation, but it's the people my age and older who are on the descent. We've got less years now than we had on the other side. And that's when, that, that was the thing. That was the thing. They said the lesson from it all is it's harder to descend than it is to ascend. Meaning the older you get, the more natural and easy it is for you to relax and say, I can take it easy now. But here's the point. If I fall, all those on my family rope, I could pull them with me. And I won't just pull them, but there's those before me that may be almost to the finish line, I could potentially wipe them out. And even more disturbing to me in that story was I saw a new generation trying to climb and if their heroes fall, it could take them out. That's why God's call to you this morning, sir, is on your rope, is your children, your wife, your grandchildren. And then there's people that have gone before you. And then there's people that, you, that, that are older that you may wipe out. If you fall back, they'll give up too. But what about those who are still climbing? What about a whole new generation? Don't they need to see marriages that work? Don't they need to see moms and dads who love God? Don't they need to see people, men who act like men, grandfathers and fathers who are not perfect? We're not perfect. We've got all, I'm not perfect. I'm nowhere near perfect. But boy, if we will just say, God, I want that. I want to be watchful. I want to stand firm in the word. I want in a generation of confusion. I want to act like a man to my wife, to my family. And I want to finish strong. I don't want to get on the descent and fall and wipe people out. I mean, it's almost like those climbing saying, if, if they can't do it, there's no way I can do it. I thought about how that many of my heroes in ministry that I started out, the man that I, I've said publicly many times, the reason that I got called into the ministry besides my own father was a man named Ronnie Brock. But he went through an episode. Thank God he got back on, on right. But he went through a fall. And it almost took me out. It devastated me as a young, young preacher. I watched, I watched some of the household names back in the 70s and 80s, heroes in my eyes, and I watched them fall. And it almost took me out, but I found the secret. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. My eyes aren't on the preacher. My eyes aren't on the church. My eyes are on Jesus. He's the only one who can take you to the finish line. Act like men.
Stand to your feet all over the room at every campus. If you fall now, if you fail now, if you turn back now, you may take more than you want to take with you. It won't just be you. But there are others connected to you. And I'm going to have a different altar call at every campus today. I want every man under the sound of my voice who wants this scripture from 1 Corinthians 16 to be a theme of your life. I want to act like a man according to God's definition. Get out of your seat. I don't care your age, if you're a grandfather, a dad. I don't care if you're a teenager, a college student. I don't care if you're in the ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade. Look at the men, look at the men. Get in as close as you can get. Look at the men, come on. Come on, this is powerful. This is powerful. This is how we change a nation. This is how we turn the world around. This is it. Come on. Come on. Come on, gentlemen. Come on. That's it. It matters. Get out of your seat. Maybe you've got things you're dealing with. Hey, there's no maybe about it. We all do. Let's bring our weakness to Jesus. Let's bring our struggle to Jesus. Let's bring our, our, our battle to Jesus. He cares. He can strengthen you. Now throw those hands up and say, Lord, I'm here. I want to be what you called me to be. Joel chapter 3 said, wake up the mighty man. Wake up the mighty man. Wake him up. Wake him up. Wake up dads. Wake up fathers. Wake up young men to character. Wake him up. Act like men. Jesus nature. You're not a beast. You're not an animal. You're better than that. Boys watch men. Boys follow men. Boys and eyes and, and climbers are coming up the mountain and they're watching you. You can't fall now. Stay strong. Be watchful. Stand firm what you know is right. God, I give you my home. Come on, say it. I give you my family. I want to act like a man. I'm kind of I'm kind of falling back, but I want to act like a man again. A man of God. Yes.
those hands toward heaven. To say, Lord, I surrender everything to you. You know my weaknesses. You know my struggles. You know the areas where I just need to step up and act like a man. God, I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better man. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better Christian. Today, I surrender all to you. I love you, Lord. I thank you for cleansing me. I thank you today for touching me again with your word. Give me courage. Give me boldness to be watchful. To be on the wall for my family. To stand firm in the faith. Not compromise my convictions. Act like a man and do all I do in love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. I hope, I hope tonight in the five o'clock service we have an unusual amount of men. I do. We better learn how to pray for our sons and our daughters. Really pray. We better learn how. You say, well, I just don't know how to pray. Well, we better learn how. The only way you learn how to pray is pray. Get in it. You'll learn how to pray. God will hear your cry just like you'll hear my cry. There's no voice stronger in the, in the, in the heavenlies than your voice for your family. I'm so honored and proud. And look at the hundreds of men, just hundreds of men. It's amazing. What a, what a group, young, old, middle-aged. How many of you have made up your mind? My, I'm not going to end in a, in a snowball and wipe my family out, wipe all you people out. It ain't going to happen. You say, well, you better, you better be careful. No, by the grace of God, it's just not going to happen. I just... Number one, I just believe that I can determine where I go and what I do and what I allow into my life. So let's, let's just act like men. We, we, can, we can control some things. It's just not going to happen. I ain't going down like that. Everybody say, I'm not going down like that. I'm not dragging my family down. I'm not dragging people trying to climb up. I'm not taking them down. I'm going to finish my course. And that Paul, Paul said, I finished it. And I'm so proud of all of you. It's an honor to be your pastor. Men of God, mighty men, mighty men. You are, you are. And to have your family in church this morning. You didn't tell them to come, you brought them. Powerful, 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 powerful. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine on you. Be gracious unto you. Lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Two quick things I need to tell you. Number one, your giving makes a profound difference. Help us in the work of the Lord. We are eternally grateful. Secondly, secondly, Easter is coming up. And we're going to have the greatest presentation we've ever had as a ministry to this community. And I want you to get the word out. And I think there's some brochures or little invite cards that you can hand out. Take them and begin to get them out. There'll be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday all day. It's just going to be powerful, and you don't want to miss it. God bless you. We love you all. Thank you for worshiping with us. Walk in the truth this week. Let's walk victorious this week. Stay strong. Honor your wife and love her this week. Serve her this week. Be sweet. Tone it down. 
Love in all you do. Love without stopping. Appreciate all of you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna just stay down here and shake hands if you're visiting or if you'd like to say hello. I'm down here, love to say hello. God bless you. Well, once again, we wanna thank you for joining us here at Free Chapel today. And men, if you're still watching, man, I, I know it hit hard for me and I hope it did for you as well. And, and listen, we are supposed to care and cultivate the relationships that we have in our lives. And wherever you may find yourself, if you're leading in the home, maybe you lead in the workplace, I wanna encourage you for that. We're not supposed to be tyrants as men, not demanding, but to show love and compassion, be sensitive to the needs of others. And I wanna tell you, uh, man or woman, Lone Ranger Christianity just does not work. And I wanna encourage you to get into a group. Maybe you're close to the area and you can check out an in-person group, but we also have online groups that typically meet via Zoom. And so I wanna encourage you to go to freechapel.org, sign up for a, a group, get that accountability. Maybe some of you want to lead a group. So explore that on freechapel.org. Absolutely, and I also wanna mention, you know, if today you're making the decision, whether it's the first time or you're coming back and, and saying, you know, I want Jesus the Lord of my life. I wanna ask him to, to come into my heart and to change everything for me. There's no better time to do it than right now and today. I wanna to congratulate you. I wanna invite you to text the word YES to 510510, and that gives us the chance to meet you, to come alongside you, to pray with you, to lead you in that prayer so that you're not doing this journey alone. We don't want you out there, you know, as a, a lone sheep. We wanna come alongside you. And on that note, if you just want prayer this morning, if you know Jesus and you just want extra faith, you want that extra blessing and anointing, once again, please text the word uh, prayer to 510-510. Please let us have the chance and the opportunity to come alongside you, with you, to believe with you, and to bless you in that prayer this morning. Absolutely. Pastor mentioned it, but again, thank you so much for being a generous church. It allows us to do so much. Uh, the gospel is going out to over 240 countries. Uh, you know, we've got Forward Conference coming up. It's a ministry that blesses over 13,000 students. Um, and so, of course, our Easter production and even this yeah. online ministry that you're watching, because of your faithfulness and giving, it allows us to do so much. Yes. So thank you. Y'all be sure to tune in tonight. We have our 5 p.m. worship revival night service. I'm so excited and expectant for that. And invite people to come stream with you, whether that's in your house or you know even across the country, but you're sharing that experience. It makes the world a difference to experience it with someone. Share this service with somebody that you know it'll bless. And uh, we hope to see you as well in the upcoming weeks. We have our amazing Easter services. We have a special production this year. So be sure to in be inviting people to, to enjoy that experience with you. Absolutely, I wanna pray for you and then thank you again for joining us. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the person that's on the other side of this camera, God. Right now, I pray you would continue to speak to them, Lord. I pray that they would grow in the knowledge and grace of Jesus Christ, Lord, that they would live for you this week like never before. Help us to show the fruits of the Spirit of peace and joy and gentleness and kindness and love and respect for others as well, God. And uh, we love you, we thank you, we take all the things that are, are on our hearts right now, we lay them at the feet of Jesus and we ask you to move in a mighty way. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes. Amen. All righty. Well, men and women, boys and girls, go forth in peace and joy. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tonight at 5 p.m. Bye-bye.